Plants are traditionally lower on the food chain than animals, but in rare cases these roles can be reversed. This usually occurs in areas nitrogen levels in the soil are low enough that plants turn elsewhere for their nutrition. Animals are a good source of nitrogen for these budding specimens. These creatures use a variety of methods in order to trap their prey. Venus flytraps use a snap method. They wait until a fly triggers them so they can quickly snap shut in order to digest their prey. The plant uses sweet nectar in order to attract unsuspecting victims. I own some of these plants myself. They are great at taking care of flies. Most predatory plants don't eat anything bigger than a bug. This is an ability that is exclusive, mostly, to larger pitcher plants. These plants have relatively complex leaves that form a simple structure. The leaf forms a cup filled with acid and a lid that hangs over the cup in order to stop water from diluting the plant's digestive acid. These plants rely on their slippery surface and toxic nectar in order to get the bug to slip into their pool of acid. These plants have evolved twice, the North American pitcher plant and tropical pitcher plants. You can tell these two groups apart easily. Tropical pitchers hang from the top of a leaf, while North American pitchers grow directly out of the stem. There have been cases of pitchers eating rodents and lizards. They have the biggest appetite of any carnivorous plant. There are plants with much smaller appetites, however. Bladderwort plants suck in microscopic aquatic animals by opening their bladders so quickly that it creates a vacuum-like force that sucks in food. There are over 200 species of this plant located in bogs and shallow water all over the world, except Antarctica. The plants have the most sophisticated traps of any group of carnivorous plants, despite the traps being only millimeters big. Ironically, we have yet to discuss the most simple of all carnivorous plants, sticky traps. These plants use their naturally sticky surfaces in order to catch passing bugs. The largest and most famous of which are sundews. Now, I'm ignoring a couple of other plant groups for the sake of brevity, but I'll let you know they use similar methods. Butterworts, for example. Sundews have hundreds of hairs that cover each leaf and produce dew. Once a bug is stuck in dew, the leaf will curl around the poor animal and the enzymes in the dew will begin to break them down. Darwin himself took a liking to these plants and looked upon them more favorably than any other species he studied, even animals. Darwin experimented with the sundew and a slew of other carnivorous plants over the next 15 years and eventually wrote Insectivorous Plants and published it in 1875. I think these creatures are very fascinating and they shatter our expectations in ways we uh, frankly wouldn't expect. One can't help but admire how unique these creatures are. I think they should be preserved and protected.